In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Burp Suite to manipulate WebSocket data to be able to inject malicious inputs into a WebSocket communication, in turn being able to exploit both the client and the server. So in general, with WebSocket, we can implement WebSocket to allow for communication between a client and server. And that sort of communication will take form with a very specific type of protocol and formatting. When we're working with Burp Suite, we can intercept these messages and be able to manipulate the formatting and messages on the client side to be able to potentially inject data into the server side, in turn allowing us to exploit the server. So in this lab, we're going to take a look at manipulating WebSocket messages to exploit vulnerabilities. When we load this up, we get a store front um, similar to a lot of the other examples that we've looked at so far. And in this storefront, we have a live chat option. So I'm going to head over to the live chat option. Let's take a look at what we've got here. With this live chat option, we connect to a person and then we can send a message of some sort and then it will go typing and then it will type out a response to the message. Now, if I take a look at Burp Suite under the proxy tab in WebSocket history, you'll see that it captures the WebSocket communication between us and the server. You can see here that when we access the page, it sends a ready request to the server, and then it sends back information to the client that will say, you're now chatting with this person and show them as connected. We then send our message to the server. The server then responds back by displaying that message onto the page, and then it displays the typing message, and then it displays the response from the person that we're chatting with. Now, the key thing that I'm interested in here is the fact that when I send something to the server, it appears to display it directly back to the client. If this is the case, then we could potentially inject something into here to allow it to display code instead of displaying text. And this would be similar to a cross-site scripting-esque attack. So let's take a look at how we might be able to do this. To start, I'm going to turn on my intercept. And what I'm going to show is, let's try sending a message that is a typical like cross-site scripting type message. So let me write it out here. So say img source equals one on error equals, um, let's say alert one. So this type of cross-site scripting attack attempts to load an image from a source that is one. That source is invalid, which means that it will cause an error. And on error, we display some JavaScript code that we want to happen. If the web page renders this text as HTML, what will happen is it will attempt to load an image and fail and then execute the JavaScript I've put into on error. This allows me to arbitrarily inject JavaScript to both myself as well as the person that I'm chatting with. So this in turn allows us to compromise the system potentially if we have a JavaScript code that will allow us to do that. Um, something like grabbing the cookie from the browser and sending it to like a server that we control would be an example of a way that we might be able to do that. Now, if I click on send for this, what you'll see is that it puts the message into a specific format and you can see that it generally encodes it with all these, um, like the less than becomes ampersand LT. Um, we see that all these different encodings are happening and in general, this wouldn't actually allow us to create any sort of compromise. The reason being is because since it's encoded, it will actually properly parse out the, the data as text, which means that it won't actually interpret it as HTML. So in general, if I weren't intercepting this and just sent that message, nothing would happen of interest. It would just display my message and we'd be done. Now, since I have control over this packet right now, I have control to be able to change it. So what I can potentially do is I can potentially replace that packet with the actual malicious uh, JavaScript code that I was trying to input. So let me type it out here again. I have image source equals one on error equals alert one. So what I could do is I can copy this and I can place it in place of this message and then I can send this instead and in turn, this won't actually encode it successfully, which in turn will allow it to interpret it as code. Now, in general, I'm going to drop this packet because you can see that I actually got disconnected from the live chat. So I'm going to go ahead and reload it. And we're just going to go through the whole example um, with enough time to, to not get disconnected. So let's go ahead and uh, reload our live chat and see, see how we can do this exploit. So just taking a minute here to reload. Um, 
Maybe I'll try going back to the home and then reloading the chat from there. Uh, I should turn off my intercept as well, because that will stop it from loading. So we'll go here, and then we'll go to our live chat. And then now that we're here, I'll turn my intercept back on. I'm going to send this malicious code. Inside of here, I'm going to replace the message with that malicious piece of code. That way, it doesn't have it encoded, and then I'll forward that. And then again, I'll forward this as well. You can see what gets returned to us is this general web page here. Um, and I can go ahead and turn off the intercept and you'll see it displays the alert that I wanted it to display. So this is the alert one that happens when the message fails to load. So generally you'll see that that allowed us to actually exploit this chat. So in general, Burp Suite allows me to intercept that, um, that uh, formatted text because it gets formatted on the client side. I can see the formatted text and then I can change it back to what I originally intended and send that to the server. The server doesn't do any further checks because it thinks the client already did them and in turn allows us to get an exploit running. So this shows you how you can get some cross-site scripting through on WebSockets and in general, how you can interact with WebSockets on Burp Suite to be able to um, manipulate the data that's being sent and potentially be able to exploit the server using it.